Psalms chapter 52. To the chief musician, Mishchel, a psalm of David, when Doeg the Edomite came and told Saul and said unto him, David has come to the house of Ahimelech. Now, this is where David takes off. And in the end, Doeg does this, and Doeg, by the orders of Saul, kills the priest. You can go back and uh, find this in your scriptures. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief? He's talking about Doag, oh mighty man. Mighty man, he was a friend of, of Saul. And what we're going to look at here is the wicked man. What is, what is mischief that people brag about, they boast about today? It's about sin, anything that's wrong, calling that good evil, and calling the evil good. I mean, in the workplace, you'll, you'll hear, oh, how many women I, I, I had this weekend, how many beers I had, how much money I wasted on this thing. and The Bible speaks about it. Guy told me today, you know, a book that was written 2,000, 3,000 years ago. Yeah, but you know what? It's up to date. The goodness of God endureth continually. Well, what is the contrast? See, here's a man that boasts he's a mighty man of mischief, but God is enduring continually, saying that the mischief of the mighty man is not going to do continually. Either, either the judgment seat of Christ or the great right, right throne judgment is going to end all mischief. And God will endure after all the laws. Thy tongue devises mischiefs. Well, Doag went and told Saul. I seen David. He was there. And this is what the priest did. He gave him food. He gave him Goliath's sword and everything. Like a sharp razor. So again, the, the, the expression that I grew up with, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt you, is a Bible lie. Amazing to teach kids something like that, and it's an outlier, outright lie according to scriptures. You know, the Bible speaks about the Word of God as a seed planted in the ground. Well, so does the world plant these little seeds in, in little children in school, and boy, how does it blossom. You know, another one was, find your keepers, lose your weepers. That means when I grew up, if you found something, because you found it, it's yours. That's not what the Bible says. And you've grown up with a bunch of people who believe that and turned them into thieves. Working deceitfully. To do wrong. And that is Capitol Hill in America today. That is a used car salesman. That is a lawyer. That is a preacher that will get up with a, with a perverted Bible. That is somebody who will tell you, just say this prayer, you'll be saved. A preacher who won't preach about hell, change the Bible. Everything. And I mean in the Baptist churches. I ain't talking about the heathen. Thou lovest. I all preachers. Thou lovest. Well all preachers are deceitful. Thou lovest evil more than good. America's getting there. The newspapers are trying to get everyone to, to go along with this sodomite agenda. Now, there are some people who are, who are against it. There are some people today, a comment I made on, on the Facebook and all that, people are liking what I said. That means the media and the schools have to work harder. They haven't completely got rid of the Bible. They're taking the Bibles out of the school. They're taking prayer out of the school. They're taking Bibles out of the courtroom. I guess the next thing they're going to have to do is take care of the, the Bible preachers. 
have to get rid of homeschooling. After all, the parents are teaching their children right or evil. To them, good is evil and evil is good. And lying rather than to speak righteousness. Selah. Now, Doad spake the truth. Everything he said was the truth. But we're looking at the wicked men in general. Lying is one of their, their, their motives, their, their, their operation. When they open up their mouth, it's a lie. And the worst thing I, I've come across for somebody is somebody not only that just lies. That's not, I mean, you can, you can, you can deal with them. Everyone lies. And if you say you never lied or you don't lie, you're lying now. You just put that tally mark. But the worst person I've seen is a person who lies and believes the lies that he says. And I've dealt with a few of them in my lifetime. Rather than to speak righteousness. Now imagine, put that on a preacher. Put that on a priest. Put that on a pastor. Put that on a reverend. Put that in anybody that stands behind a pulpit in America or in the world and rather speak lies than righteousness. And how foolish you are to, to try to cover up your lie with a lie and to be righteous. Oh, it's not Jesus' birthday, but we just look at it. Uh, uh, that's, you just said it's a lie. What's the problem? Now that sila is there's a second advent. And you know what happens before the second second advent, Lord Jesus Christ? You got a wicked, adulterous, and uh, fornicating and satanic people on this earth that are the majority with Satan running the world from his throne. Thou lovest all devouring words. Now what is that? Words that destroy somebody. You know, there may be a day, they say it's days of not Lot and days of Noah, and Satan's come and taken over this world for seven years. Thou lovest all devouring words. There may be some, if not the law, that will stand up for a husband that destroys his wife and children with his mouth. There are men out there who, who enjoy breaking his wife, not with a fist, not with a ball back, but with his words. Occults will do the thing with their words. O oh, thou deceitful tongue. O oh, the original Greek in the, the originals and the, those are devouring words. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. Does that look like they're saved? Destroy thee forever. God will do it personally. He, God, shall take away, or shall take thee away, death, and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place where you're living, and root thee out of the land of the living, death, say love. You know why some die? Because of deceit. The wages of sin is death. The, the, one of the sins is deceit. It will cause death. If you want to see a deceitful tongue working, read how Joe Smith died of the Mormon church. And watch their little deceiving mouths try, try to back up their founder of their religion. Listen to them how, they, how the, the, the deceitfulness Change the whole story. How husbands came into the jail and killed him because they he was fooling around with their wives. 
and disorderly and an outlaw. The righteous also shall see and fear. Oh, so when God doesn't act on somebody, it is for others to learn. And shall laugh at him. Oh, you ought not to laugh. What's that verse say? When the PTL club fell and all that, the Christians should have laughed. A lot of them went, hmm, what am I going to do now? When their favorite pre preacher, the TV or radio, falls, they're, oh, what am I going to do now? When their wicked preacher falls, they don't laugh, they, they fall in dismay. We know the Bible. We all, ha, you should have knew better, buddy. And when you look at somebody like that, you say, oh, you ought not to laugh. Listen, God never passes judgment unless he sends the warning. When that PTO and all those TV preachers, when they fell, I guarantee God sent them warning. God sent them people. God did something before he judged. You know, God's using me. As a preacher of the gospel, of the Bible, to tell these people that sodomy is a sin and you need to repent. Lo, well, this is the man that made not God his strength. What? The one that you're to laugh at. Listen, Proverbs 1 says, and Psalms 2, I believe, says, God's going to laugh at him. Imagine God going to have a joke with an atheist as that atheist stands before the God he never believed in. You know, that's a joke. God is God is great. I could just picture. I don't know what's going to happen, but I mean, this is personal. You don't have to believe. But you just picture an atheist. I'm not an atheist. An evolutionist going up before the great white throne judgment. There's God, and God's holding a platypus. Okay, boy, explain this. Come on, explain this little booger here. You imagine a marineologist coming up and, you know, save the whale. You imagine God, he calls up a whale. Here, come here, Mr. Whale. Now, what would you do with your soul? This thing is dead. It's going back to nowhere. What about you? Where are you going to go? Get this thing out of my hand. You go to hell. You saved the whale, but you're not, you didn't save yourself. That's a joke to God. I mean, the Bible says we're all going to be like Jesus, right? So you get a religion that teaches that a woman can save. All right, here's the joke of God. Here's a pope standing before God. All right, what would you say? Mary can save you? Mary, come here. Yes, sir. Mary's going to be a man one day. That's a joke. Mary would say, hey, back then, John, I told you to do what Jesus said. He turned the water into wine. He didn't turn the, 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 the hooch into blood. You got it all wrong. Mary's commandment to all people is do what her son said or says to do. Go back there and read it in John chapter, I think it's 4. Okay. But trusted in the abundance of his riches. Well, there's that rich guy in Luke. Eat, drink, and be merry. I hope the owner, the CEOs of Walmart are saved, and they're not trusting their rich is going to save them. You imagine, I mean, if they're, I don't know. I hope this is. But you imagine an owner of a major corporation stand before God, the great white throne judgment, and he says, well, I had this company, and God says, what, what was that? Well, this big name company. What? I've had all this money. Okay, where's the money? Well, I don't have no pot. I don't even have no clothes. 
You're going to stand before God naked. You ain't going to have no place to put money. By the way, all your money comes from ore. It comes from resources. Resources are from God. So the riches that you have are belong to God. And strengthen himself in his wickedness. Is that America government or not? We enjoy to do wicked. Now, verse 8, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. That's a mouthful. I'm going to go to verse 9. And I'll come back to 8. I will praise thee forever. And forever and ever and ever and ever eternity. What are we going to do when we get to heaven? We're going to praise God. What about me? No, not about you. Not, not of works, least any man boasts. But our church had 400 people saved. Yeah, so... Book of Acts, there were thousands of men saved. What, what's the big deal? By the way, it wasn't you that God saved. You were just a planter or you were just a water. God gave the increase. Because thou hast done it. What has God done? God's done everything. People think it's stupid. Is there a rock that God, too heavy that God can't pick up? God done it all. And I will wait on thy name. We have to. You think we're going to make the rapture happen any quicker? <laughs> God be laughing at us. For it is a good, for it is good before thy saints. Alright, verse 8. I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. So can you go back to Exodus? Or where Solomon built the temple. Can you find a green olive tree in the house of God? No, you cannot. But, oh, yes, you can. But you cannot. The Lord just showed me this one right now. This is the one. I believe some of the wood that was used for the, for the temple were olive trees. I think the doors were olive trees. So that's another thing the Lord just showed me. And that's not even the, ooh, ah, the fireworks. Olive is a type of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Green is life in the Bible. So you got the Holy Spirit there in the house of God, not only God in the holy place, the most holy place, not into everything like the Jesus Christ, everything is like in the Jesus Christ, a type of Jesus Christ. Now you got the Holy Spirit there. There's the Trinity. That's the second ah. Ooh. And I got this from a Jewish writer. I saw it was Jewish, so I said, well, let me go to that web page and check it out. I mean, anybody who knows anything about Jewish stuff would be a Jewish person. This is what he said about a green olive tree. No matter the condition, now think about this as your Christian walk. No matter the conditions, hot, cold, dry, wet, sandy. No matter what goes on in your life, the evergreen olive tree will live and produce fruit. Aren't we in God and God is in us? Don't we have all kinds of trials and tribulations and all that? We are all to produce fruit. Wherefore, by their fruits, the Bible says, ye shall know them. You are in the house of God if you are this olive tree, the Holy Spirit. And you are to produce fruit. It is said, now get this one. It is said you can never kill an olive tree. So what did Jesus say? Fear not that to kill the body, but fear him that can kill the body and the soul and cast it into hell. 
Paul said to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Listen, I'm walking around this body in the Holy Spirit, in God, in Jesus. And God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are in me. And, by, and Paul says to be absent from the body, there I am in heaven. How about that? And that's not done either. Take Fox's Book of Mars. Get this one. This is interesting. I'm telling you about everybody. Was, oh, there was a green olive tree in the house of God. Oh, that must have been pretty. That's not what it's saying. You couldn't have a green olive tree in the house of the Lord. God never ordered it. It says, cut down or burn. You know what happened to earlier Christians? Cut it down or burn it, and new shoots emerge from the roots. You know, they can get rid of us, but they won't get rid of the Bible. They will not get rid of Christians. You may put all the Christians, which are not going to, the Bible says those that remain, so there's going to be some Christians alive. You put a Christian in the ground, and guess what? He's going to emerge from the roots. So there's a great possibility, according to that right there, two thousand fourteen, that Paul, James, Peter, John, Barnabas, Silas, Timothy are still getting fruits for their labor, and they've been dead how long? I believe as a born-again Christian, if you're a soul winner, you go out and win, uh, win one soul. And that guy goes out and wins a soul. That soul that that guy wins is credited to you because you got that one soul. That guy goes out and wins two souls. Well, everybody has now there has been part of that, that guy, those two get saved. You send $5 over to a missionary. And he gets people saved. God will credit you that five dollars that you gave to that missionary, and some of those souls, if not all of them, will be credited to your account. Now they go out and win souls. Because you gave money to the missionary to go out there and do all the work, those that won souls that won souls by the missionary are now credited to your account. Let's say you die and go home and be with the Lord. You left a track somewhere. Ten years you've been dead, and that track has been there for whatever reason. Somebody picks up that, that track, they read it, they get saved. God's ungracious not to give you a reward because you're dead? The person that you led to the Lord, led someone else 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 to the Lord, and all the way down to the, the five, ten years after you're dead, and the, that chain of, of, of people getting saved by what you did. God is ungracious not to give you a reward? Even though you cut it or burn it down, shoots spring up from the roots. There's always life in the house of God. Jesus told those Sadducees, God is the God of the living, not of the dead. That's a wonderful verse there. And some people just read, oh, green olive tree, and it's, oh, that must been pretty. Not more than pretty. It pictures the Holy Spirit. Bringing men to God, it pictures God, God bringing the men to him. It pictures the Lord Jesus Christ. It pictures the Holy Spirit. And it pictures us as fruit-bearing Christians. And you can't get rid of it. It's a holy, proper weed. A weed is something that just keeps coming up. You can't get rid of it. You go in the garden and plant tomatoes. Weeds are going to come up. You're done with to, to those tomatoes. Next year, you're going to see those weeds again. You might not see a tomato. You may see one tomato bush or a couple, but not really likely, but you'll see the weeds.
And then you use the seeds that's in the fruit, and you plant more, and you get even more fruit. That's a wonderful thing about soul winning. God is gracious. Now, I'm not going to go far to say it's a Christian that doesn't soul win. You know, it's not say I won't go that far. I will say one thing. I, I, if you're saved and you don't soul win, I, I can guarantee this. You will be at a great loss the great, at the judgment seat of Christ. And I wonder if you're going to get a tongue lashing from Jesus. I do know that you will be in trouble with the great white throne judgment. Oh, wait a minute. You say Christians don't go to great white throne judgment. You will be there when you see people who will be cast into hell. When you watch your family, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, everybody that you dealt with in your lifetime, including a cashier at the gas station, when they point your, their finger at you, why you didn't tell me is God throws them into hell. And, and, and Ezekiel says you got the blood of their lives on your fingertips. Explain it. And you're not going to cop out, oh, I'm going to let my light shine. That's a cop out. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart.